So everyone, I think we have a problem. Okay, well, it's not like a big problem. However, I think it is definitely a side effect of having way too many new things done and not making any changes to them. So needless to say, uh, I've noticed that under wide open throttle or even part throttle high boost situations, I'll notice this like, um, I don't know, pulsing or surging, fluttering. I don't know what to really use to describe it, but it's like a It's like a, a swishing, wishy noise coming from up here under those situations. And I don't stay in it because I don't know what it is. And that's what I'm trying to find out is, you know, what's making that noise. So what I think it is, and this is just me going off logic, is I think it's this, the recirc valve right here. And I think it's pulsing, you know, under those uh, high boost situations to let the air out because this engine it's going to make more power with the same amount of boost because the cams are going to help out with airflow you know slightly higher compression so it's going to make it's going to reach its torque limits way sooner than the last engine with this new setup so it doesn't take as much air and yet it's still pushing a lot it's still pushing a 22 whatever stock psi in that the car thinks it needs to make said amount of power what i think is happening is under these extended pulls like when you're when you're going and the car thinks you know when the car starts noticing that the boost threshold like how much is going in how much torque it's making is exceeding the limits it starts trying to bleed it back so and i think that's what i'm hearing is this the valve pulsing the car doesn't really run any different when it does it it just makes the noise and it freaks me out so i just want to go ahead and go take a data log and see what it is see if it can be captured or identified on the data log that way i know um and i would be feel a little bit better about it but i think that's what it is and then pretty much until i get things to tune it and adjust those torque limits and all these different limiters that are built into these new cars it's going to do that under extended periods of throttle with that said i'm gonna go ahead and get in the car we're gonna go out take a quick data log come back and we'll take a peek at it so i'm about to record this run and you know the problem is here i don't think i actually have a way to log uh the recirc valve specifically so if it is that I don't know if there's something else in the log that will allude to that. I'll, I'll check it out when I do it, but that's the only crap part is I don't really have a way to directly log the research valve, which would be great because if that's what it is and you know, that's what it is. But uh, either way, I'm gonna go ahead and do it, you know, cause I still wanna know if, if there's anything bad that shows up in the log. I never stay in it when I do hear it, but the car never seems like it does anything it shouldn't do. So um, it's just because it's not a sound that I, would typically hear that's why I don't I don't stay in it but you should be able to hear it I'm just like in normal driving mode I ain't got nothing crazy going on and it's only when you are like at high boost for an extended period of time you'll you'll hear it so usually if I'm wide open throttle for a gear or two that's when I start noticing it and if you happen to have an idea what this is let me know but I, I'm you know kind of sure what it is just based off kind of the little bit I do know, you know, just a little bit. These cars have so many damn torque limiters that they will lock down everything to keep everything under control. So if the car is trying to push more boost, they'll do everything it can to, to limit that. So best better do it before I catch up the traffic. Now, to my surprise, it didn't do it that bad that time. And it threw a wrench, and I know that wrench is for an overboost code. And it's running good up until it throws the overboost code, and it's running strong. So I know that's pretty much the car saying, hey, there's too much of a lot of things that we don't think that should be happening, you know, because all these torque limits are set. 
the safety limiters are set, you exceed them for a certain period of time, the car is going to shut you down. Got to get that thing HP tuners. Got to get it so I can uh, so I can take all that stuff off or raise it up. Because I know this car has got more in it. It just cannot make the power because the car is going to shut it down. But I don't really stay in it that long because I kind of stayed in it until it threw an overboost code. I guess it normally probably would throw an overboost code every time I hear that shuffing noise. And I think that really is the recirc valve just pulsing, trying to vent out air. And then when the car realizes that it's still not enough, throws up, you know, pops up the overboost code and shuts it all down, throws it in wet mode. I don't know, we'll go ahead and see. I'm gonna check the log when I get home. I'm gonna see what it looks like. And if I find anything that looks sus, I'll let you know. All right, back home now, just double checking that code. Like I said, I'm almost positive it's an overboost code. PU234, turbocharger overboost. Yeah, like I said, it does that. What I don't understand though, why it throws that though, is because it's not actually overboosting. I watched the gauge and it doesn't really go past where it normally would. So I'm not sure why it throws an overboost code, but I know it's not actually overboosting, which I find is weird now. Could it be something weird with the map sensors? Maybe. Could it be something with the boost max? Could be, maybe. I don't think so. They're all things to look into, but once I get a tuning solution, I won't have the boost max on anyway. All right, here in the office, and I got the data log pulled up here. Yeah, there's definitely something weird going on. Now I've looked over this whole log and I can't find the fluttering sound like what's making it but the car definitely is doing something it shouldn't be doing which is causing the overboost condition and i'm sure what is causing that fluttering when it happens because this is what i found out okay so uh blue line here is when i mash the gas pedal you know go over here wide open and this is where i let off right here this is an important metric because the car decided to let off before I did. And well, that definitely shows up in the data log. So if we look at our boost, uh, it comes in and, you know, we're at normal boost level. Stock, normal stock boost level, 22. And then, you know, as it shifts, where, where's my RPM? So I go through a couple gears, uh, just two gears. Boost goes down and shifts and then boost goes up, but the boost stays higher this time around than it did. Probably because the car has more load, but this is what I thought was weird. So you go to your tip boost KPA. This is desired. This is what the car wants. And if you follow the line, it's following the boost curve perfectly. See it? That's great. And then there's tip boost KPA, which is what the sensor is actually reading. This is what's concerning me. Look at the tip boost. It's maxed out 310 the whole way. Actual boost at the manifold is not that, but tip boost is. So I don't know if the sensor is in reporting wrong. And this is where my thought is it related to the boost max because the boost max plugs into both the tip boost sensor and the map sensor on the manifold. So this is one of two sensors that it plugs into. So is it that messing it up or is there something else going on here? It's weird how it flatlines here. And this is the interesting part. See how the tip boost stays flatlined like that? And then if we go back to our desired See how it goes and then just drops. That's when the car threw the wrench light for overboost. The tip boost drops and this is where it goes into protection. And if we go to our turbo or wastegate uh, actuator, you can see as soon as that green line, as soon as that tip boost desire drops, the car is demanding no, it don't want no boost. Boom, it drops, the wastegate completely opens. It goes from 44, almost 45% to zero, completely open, bypassed to protect the car. Yet, somehow, even when it did that, if you look, the boost itself, I guess maybe just needed time to bleed it out. But if you look, the wastegate open and there's still boost, 19 PSI, 17, 14, 
10 back here, when the wastegate opened up, this isn't when the car went in a, in a uh, limp mode. This is when the car went in the limp mode. So now I'm wondering, okay, so why is the car, why is the car have so much, why is the tip sensor reading so high? And it looks like the car tries to correct and see how it drops. The wastegate opens up, it's still making boost, and this is why it throws an overboost code because the car knows the wastegate's open, it should be making no boost, we're still making boost, and then it shuts it down. But the interesting part is it's actually not making all that much boost. Like I said, it's making normal amounts, 20, 21. It's actually less than what it normally makes. Honestly, it, it usually makes more than this. If there is a wrench light for overboost quite often, and I don't know why, and now I see that it is doing something, but I don't know why. I don't know why it is doing what it's doing. Now I need to try to bypass the boost max to see if there's any difference. Uh, that very well could be a problem. And if it's not that, then I don't know if it's a bad sensor or, or what's going on. Or just there needs to be some changes made via the tune to make everything happy with this new setup. All I know is the car is not running unsafe, but it thinks it's unhappy. And unfortunately, when I am trying to have some fun and I am trying to push the car a little bit for, you know, any reason, the car shuts itself down because it thinks there's a problem. And that's weird because there's not a problem. And all my other parameters look great. In fact, some of the other parameters look better, i.e. fuel pressure and a lot of other things look better on this new setup than it did the old one, which I don't even understand because everything's the same. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. I'm going to have to play around with this a little bit more and see if I can figure it out. It's a little annoying, but I figured I'd make a video about it. Just kind of, you know, going over the, the problem because I think it's interesting. It could be tune related. It could be something on the car. I don't know. I'll dig into it more, and of course, when I figure it out, I'll update it, and I'll update you on what's going on. If you have any insight to what it could be, let me know. I'm open to uh, your opinions. You might know exactly what I need to know. So if you have any suggestions on what could be causing this, go ahead, throw your uh, suggestion in the comments. Let me know what you think. Otherwise, I think it's gonna wrap it up here for this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share with everyone you know if you wanna see more content like this and you haven't already. Go ahead, subscribe to the channel. Keep a lookout for our next Cars Creative video.